Hello everybody and just here and welcome back to Ruby Hyosetsu Teikoku Ice Queendom uh, Hyosetsu Teikoku, did I say it correctly? Yeah, Hyosetsu Teikoku <clears throat> uh, Right, in the previous episode uh, we had a chance to regroup, essentially um, Ruby, Young and Blake were fighting Vice in her dream there was a big boss fight with some very random CG people for some reason, but oh well, it's past us now, so uh, I'm not gonna be too hung up on it unless they repeat it in this episode, which uh, I'd rather they don't. And uh, after they got essentially just bodied, completely blasted away, like Team Rocket, and uh, they had to run from the dream because they had uh, only one singular spare coin, uh, they had a chance to regroup. And um, it seems like that was what was very much needed for everybody. Young had a chance to speak with Penny, Blake had a chance to speak with uh, Sun. I think is his name, the uh, the Faunus dude who got here on like like as a stowaway on a boat. I think his name is Sun, and uh, Ruby had a chance to speak to Team Juniper, and it seems like everybody got some ideas how to approach the whole Vice situation better. Uh, they assembled some plan. They figured out what they want to do, communicated, and. Uh, now they have a plan, and they're gonna execute it. How will they do in that execution? Very hard to tell. It is episode 7, after all, right? It's uh, barely past half the season, so I don't know if we're gonna just solve it right now. Because if this time around... Um, uh, right, this is their last chance. Right, from what the Hat Witch told them. Uh, this is the last chance they have to save Vice, so they will have to solve it. In this episode, uh, maybe not, perhaps in the next one, but that will be episode 8 out of like 12 of them. What's gonna fill the rest? That's what I'm a little bit wary of. Well, maybe not wary of, but uh, that's something I wonder. <clears throat> About because so far it very much does seem like this season uh, is going to only focus on Vice. So, what will the last few episodes bring? Hard to tell. Uh, also, would be fairly hard to give us some sort of a satisfying climax if they get Vice out of her dream before the end of the season. And on the other hand, uh, prolonging it and stretching their time there any further would also not be great. So, uh, I have no idea how they're gonna solve it, but I'm guessing they're gonna solve it somehow. Uh, anyway, now the rest of Team Ruby, well, I guess the entirety of Team Ruby, because Vice is already asleep, uh, went to sleep, and with them also Jean from Team Juniper, because uh, he was uh, possessed by the um, by the Grim, by the Thorn Grim, and uh, thus the Grim inside of Vice's mind will um, will essentially not see him, uh, will treat him as a non-issue, so he'll be able to sneak around and maybe uh, maybe help our main heroes. Well, he probably will be able to help our main heroes because what other reason would be? Uh, to take him with us, right? Uh, what are their plans exactly? Multiple. Uh, some of them uh, seems want to change the dream, want to change uh, Vice, but Vice needs to uh, needs to want that change. Uh, but maybe Vice does want that change deep inside of her. How to get deep inside of her so that Vice changes her dream? Uh, I'm guessing we're gonna go um, somewhere along those lines of trying to speak to the deep vice, to the vice deep within, so that she can help them destroy, shatter this nightmare of a dream, and uh, free her. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. That's gonna be interesting how they're gonna go about it, what they're gonna do, and uh, how much CG people we're gonna see for no reason. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, to see that, you guys will need your subs, of course, and I'm gonna need my sound. And I'm also gonna need to ask you for your support on Patreon, Throne Monitor, the links in the description. Or, if you don't want to spend any money, share my content, spread the word, because it really does help a lot for the growth of a channel. And uh, with all that out of the way, we can finally start watching episode 7 of uh, Ruby Ice Queendom, and we can do that in 3, 2, 1, go. <clears throat> Okay, so some things haven't changed. Net ulti. Oh, Jean just got... ...buried in the snow. Oh, that's a cool sword! I don't recall his sword being this cool. Oh. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, would make sense. In Vice's eyes. 3 itch, probably. Does Jean have some means of locomotion? Okay, his shield, apparently. Interesting that his sword and his shield are separate now. Oh, okay, no, sorry, they are separate. His sword's scabbard turns into a uh, shield. My mistake. That was a little bit extra. <laughs> Why does he have a second sword, though? The train, the Faunus attack. Okay, we are repeating the same thing again. Groundhog Day, essentially. <clears throat> Yeah, it very much is Groundhog Day. They're repeating the same dream in hopes of kind of breaking the cycle. Except they have a limited amount of attempts. That shot of Ruby in front of the store is probably still the best shot of this, uh, of this series so far. Interesting how everybody gets more or less an equal um, screen time in the opening, both Team Ruby and Juniper. And yet, besides besides uh, Jean's involvement here, they're pretty much in irrelevant. Just an observation. Okay, show me what you got. <clears throat> oh, they're gonna help this time around? Right. <clears throat> or is she just using the scope to observe? Also, question is, who's she gonna help? Who are they going to help, if anybody? I guess they're helping the train. Hmm. Okay. That was a shockwave and a half. You have a second sword, apparently, so use that.
Weren't you complaining about how heavy it is? Blood? That... I think that's the first time you see blood in this uh, show. Okay, so you already have changed the dream. And, okay, the thing is untangling. Interesting. Could it be, like, illustrating their progress in untangling the dream, so to speak? Oh, this time without a brush. Already some changes. Butterfly effect. Oh, uh, a change? Hmm, what will be the consequences of it? A wall, yes. Okay, what you gonna do, Vice? And of course, the overbearing face of her father. Talking about responsibility and whatnot. Some cool music in the background, though. And with it, all the cargo. Tick-tock, Vice. Make your choice. And it opens. Ice Queen. Okay. Here we have... Almost the title. <laughs> Almost the subtitle, I guess. That's a lot of layers. Oh, the bu whole buildings are moving. Okay. I did not expect the entire city to reform itself to give way to the train. Intruders. Hmm. Is it gonna open? Oh, no, we're just gonna build a ramp. Sure. <laughs> okay, why not? All the way to the top of the Honnoji Academy? Or is it gonna stop some way along the way... Shadow people running away. Some street fair, some festival. That's a train station.
Now it's time to take the stairs, I'm assuming. I guess they're not unloading the cargo. Checkpoint. What is your plan, Ruby? Probably, yeah. Looks like allergies. Where's his big sword, though? Is it still stuck in the train? I'm assuming so. Oh, changing her perception of uh, Blake, changing her perception of Jean. Yeah, slowly changing Vice's mind. Nowhere to be seen. Right, that's an issue. Blake is Faunus after all. Right, so she steeled her resolve. Which isn't great, because we don't want her to steal her resolve. We want her to break her resolve, we want to remold her understanding of things, essentially. And she's still in her hammock. I love it. I love how chill she is about it. Oh, the robot has thorns on its chest. That wasn't the case before. Or was it? I don't think it was. I don't think the robots had thorns. Oh, it's the door line. The peak line. And you sure do look like a silly. And here's the rest of Team Juniper. How else is he gonna get inside, though? Yeah. <laughs> okay, who's the dummy here? Oh, that works. <laughs> okay, that seems like a nice place. I wouldn't mind being a silly.
he's gonna get tempted into staying here, isn't he? All these signs point at a stop. And that's one of the relics. This one's yellow. Yeah. Tiny vices. Sure. Why not? Lolly vices are on the loose. The inner child of vice, essentially. Yeah. She she shot herself as a silly, her younger self as a silly. Isn't that it? She treated her dreams of being free, of going to festivals, of being a child and so on, as being silly. So she herself is closed in the silly cage. Oh, that's great symbolism. I mean, shit, symbolism, it's pretty fucking apparent. <laughs> okay, infecting everybody with the desire of freedom. Even Big Nicholas. The yellow relic. What does the color signify, though? Yeah. Oh, they're saying something else than meow. Okay, I guess it's a mass battle now. An army lo of lolis versus an army of robots. <laughs> With some pretty fucking dope mu music accompanying it. Okay, what was that? The true vice. Well, true. And what's the book? I'm assuming it's not an album of her childhood photos. Another checkpoint. You're gonna have to get inside first, and uh, I'm guessing you're gonna have to go through Vice to do that. Pira? With a handkerchief. Yeah, just a little bit. Who's that? Big Klein? Oh. Uh, Chubby Vice. Vicezilla? Vicezillas are just wrecking havoc in the city. 
Okay, the negative aspects of childishness. Gotcha. It's not just about freedom, it's also about the needs, the desires to be pampered, to be spoiled. The Grimm is essentially turning everything like a 180. It seems that's the case. And that was an attack by Vice, I'm assuming. The real Vice. Indeed. That's a cool scene. Bringing the storm. A snowstorm. Not just any old regular thunderstorm. Hmm. Is it gonna be like Mecha Big Nicholas? Is she reviving the statue of Big Nicholas as a motherfucking Mecha? That's exactly what she's doing. <laughs> The biggest Nicholas. Okay, it doesn't have legs, so not fully mecha, but kind of sorta. Okay, so boss battle next episode. Gotcha. Hmm. It, it really feels like not much has happened in this episode, honestly. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. It, it feels like not much has happened, all in all. We got, like, what? The train? Which the scenes of the train riding took, like, half the episode. Then half the episode was filled with uh, lolly vices running amok. And that's the episode, essentially. Kind of feels a little bit like they're stretching it. Just a little. We're gonna go through it again, though, to fully, like, yet again see what's been going on. Maybe there's been more more to this episode than I immediately remembered, but we'll see. I guess I preferred that to the way that episode, what, episode 3 was, where it was just Everything in the kitchen sink. Oh, hey, okay. Lolly Vice is running around. This episode is great now. 10 out of 10. <laughs> I have no qualms. Uh, that little ending scene made it all worth it. Uh, okay, how about uh, now, as I said, we go through this episode again. Shall we? Yes, we shall. Uh, right, the dream can clearly be changed. That's an amazing looking sword. But not a sword that Jean can wield. This thing, this thing appears constantly. It's always there. 
It was there in the room where Vice looked up all her precious things. It's here now, then it's uh, again there in the silly cage. It changes when they save the train. It's gotta be significant somehow. Helping the train. Yeah, right? It changes, it shifts, or rather it looks like some of those branches are kind of wilting. One of them has like a stop symbol on it, one of them has some Japanese writing, uh, one of them has like literal stop written on it, and they're all wilting. There are no longer possibilities. I'm assuming that kind of signifies all the routes they can take in a dream. Kind of like routes you can take in, I don't know, light novel or in any sort of a Groundhog Day situations. Where this thing cannot happen now. This thing cannot happen. This thing cannot happen. Those things are the things that can happen now. I feel that might be something, it might be something along those lines. And we can already observe the uh, butterfly effect because Vice denies the brush. Yeah, the train is on the way, that's a very big change. Also, interesting thing about uh, Jean and his uh, big sword. Everybody else... If their weapons have been changed, like in case of uh, of Ruby, it's not that she got another weapon. Her own weapon was changed. In the case of Jean, he got a second weapon, which is interesting to say the least. Uh, let me scroll to the very beginning when we see Jean. Yeah, from the very beginning, he has two swords. His regular... Transformer weapon, and this big new ornate sword. Why not just ditch the ornate sword and use your familiar weapon? Yeah, things are changing, things are shifting, but of course the overbearing face of the father, who's not even a person here. He's not even having any sort of a dialogue with Vice. He's not telling her to do things, it's like a recording. It's like an audio recording of him just constantly repeating, you carry a heavy responsibility, Vice. You are an heiress of the Schnee family, you have responsibility. What you do will define you as the heiress of the Schnee family. You're responsible as an heiress of the Schnee family on repeat. Interesting. Yeah, you carry a heavy responsibility yet again. And of course she opens at the last moment. What in the world is happening? And here we have this like super long sequence of just the train running. Kinda overstayed its welcome, not gonna lie, but whatever. Uh, that's what I meant when I said that uh, it seems like they were stretching this episode a little. Uh, the sequence of the train running through the city did not need to be this long. Like, it was cool and all, don't get me wrong, but ultimately it didn't need to be this long. Mm. Yeah, the robots were able to receive the train. And again, you carry a heavy responsibility. What should I do? Question into the complete void. Her father doesn't... This is interesting. This is interesting that her father doesn't even order her. Right? Like, you would think that there would be some, like, exchange going on here. Vice asks, what should I do? 
right? And her father from the ceiling says, you should do this and that, I order you to protect the cargo, you are the heiress of the Schnee family, you have responsibility for the cargo, or something like that, but no, it's not an interactive experience. The father, his hologram, is there only to, con to constantly spout lines about responsibility, nothing else. It seems to me like a lot of that uh, might be like a um, might be signifying that a lot of it is entirely in Vice's mind. And sure, we are literally inside of Vice's mind. But uh, what I mean is that it's not necessarily that her father told her what she needs to do and given her orders what she needs to do and how she needs to go about things and how she and who she needs to grow up into and all that stuff it seems like a lot of it is simply her inference her father simply repeats lines about responsibility and being an heiress of the schnee family and vice herself just built layers and layers and layers around it right she she kept overthinking what does it mean to be responsible, what does it mean to be the heiress of the Schnee family and stuff like that, and kind of spiraled out of control. That's my take on it. Now that I noticed that the father in the ceiling just doesn't say anything but lines about responsibility. No orders, no questions, no nothing. Not, not even any... This is very interesting and uh, very kind of... Maybe not out of character, but out of what we are led to believe should be the character. There aren't any, like, attempts at uh, knock Vice down a peg or anything like that. The father isn't even uh, reacting to what's happening, right? No lines about... Oh, Vice, finally, after this many attempts, you didn't suck and you made sure the cargo got here. Now make sure that you're not gonna fail again, or something like that, right? You'd assume that her father would be this kind of person to completely put her down for everything she's doing until she's entirely perfect, and then he'd probably find some ways to, uh, to cast her out for being perfect as well. He very much does seem the type. And yet the ceiling dad is just not doing that. Complete absence, complete complete disregard for anything. Hmm. Yeah, questions about are you truly worthy to be a child of the Shni family? What's the book? I don't know. Uh, yeah, first time we see the thorns on the robots, which is interesting. Is it something that um, only Jean can see because he was infected by this Grimm? Or is it something that just appeared on the robots that genuinely wasn't there before? Or is it something that just wasn't there before but was a thing, actually just wasn't shown on the models? Yeah, the silly cage. Hmm, and apparently the silly cage is a very cool place. It is a very cool place because it is a it is a place that I believe Vice imagines as a place where that you would enjoy if you're silly. If you're a silly, right? Like only silly people enjoy first like this. Only silly people enjoy popcorn. Only silly people enjoy, uh, like, what was that? Caramel, caramel apples or some chocolate bananas. Only silly people uh, would enjoy, I don't know, scooping out goldfish and things like that. And she locked everything behind the bars. Again, this, uh, not a waypoint, uh, which I'm gonna call it, like, crossing sign. Uh, 
I'm blanking on the name. You know what I mean. I mean this exact thing. Again, the symbolism of it. All the routes lead to a stop. Why? I don't know, but they do. Uh, the relic is inside. Why? I don't know. It's yellow. Why? I have no clue. But it's here and it's yellow. And taking it out makes the tree get a massive erection and uh, just all the stops turn to ghosts. And uh, go they are. Go they do. The, uh, the lolly vices. With her little lolly daggers. Running around having fun. Dumplings, I'm assuming like dango. Azuki. Mitarasi and tricolor. Some crepes. Being a child is silly. Having all those childish wants and desires is silly. Enjoying the childishness of myself is silly. That side of me, that part of me is silly and deserves to be locked up. Yeah, that very much seems to be the case. I want to be free to go outside, but no, that's silly. Let's lock that desire up. I want to go out. No, that's silly. Let's lock it up. I love festivals. No, I don't. Festivals are silly. Let's lock that thought up. Mm -hmm. She did keep her childhood feelings locked up. And they turn everybody to their side. They make everybody have the desire to be free, to run around, to have fun. Be free, join the fight, and we're fighting. Uh, this is interesting, though. Uh, one thing interesting is that uh, the robots are no longer wrapped in thorns. Those look more like Christmas decorations, like green garlands. Why? I don't know, but that's what they are wrapped into. Into green Christmas garlands. Things are getting kind of crazy, and out of nowhere... A chubby, vi chubby vice -zilla. I wanna make friends. Let us fight for freedom. I'm not really sure what's the deal here. Why did uh, Loli Vice turn into, into vice -zilla? Why did they start attacking them? Like, sure... Here it seems like uh, this, um, those childish desires were maybe corrupted, maybe uh, like the negative sides of childish desires resurfaced, that those childish desires aren't only to have fun and eat candied apples, those childish desires are also to be spoiled, to be pampered, and those are the negative ones. That's my reading on it, although, I'll be honest, I have no clue. I have no clue why uh, the pink one and the green one suddenly turned against them. Why the robots suddenly turned against them. I don't know why the change. Now, sure, we see the thorns here. I don't know. I don't know. Probably corruption due to the grim. And Vice apparently just revived, well, revived, uh, animated the statue of Big Nicholas. I thought that they're gonna go for like a full on Gundam, and it's gonna be Big Nicholas is gonna be like a huge golden Shiva with six arms walking around, and they're gonna have to fight it. Uh, but apparently, it's still stationary. They're gonna fu they're gonna have to fight it one way or another, but at least it's stationary. The name of Big Nicholas and the Great Schnee family. I'm gonna bestow my judgment upon you.
Hmm. This made the episode worth it, though. <laughs> Lowly Vice absolutely made this episode worth. Any complaints I might have had about it? I don't have any more. <laughs> okay, it's been only 45 minutes. Uh, I really didn't have much to say about this episode, did I? Uh, okay, that was episode 7 of Ruby Ice Queendom, and apparently I really didn't have much to say about it. And that kind of validates my initial feelings that not much really has happened here, like, quantitatively. Uh, because a lot has happened uh, when um, when it comes to, like, the overarching story, right? Uh, the dream is clearly changing, Vice herself is clearly changing, uh, we got um, a fair bit more insight into Vice's mind, into her idea of being, being a silly and that she deems a part of herself also a silly. Uh, we got insight into whatever Vice Zillas were supposed to signify. I'm honestly not sure about that still. Uh, if you have any ideas, do share with them. Um, I would be willing and uh, happy to listen to your opinions about it. Uh, but I don't. I, I have no idea what the Vice Zillas were on about, but. I'm assuming they were about something. Uh, and yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. Uh, Importance-wise, a lot has happened. The dream is proven to be changeable. Uh, it's proven to be changing, even without like a conscious uh, desire and conscious actions towards changing it. Like that tree that remained broken. Mm, they're not gonna use that knowledge in like their next attempt because there's not gonna be a next attempt. So that kind of diminishes the importance of those revelations just a little bit, but sure. Uh, they are still a fair bit important. More insight into Vice's mind, as I already said. And... Uh, set up for the final boss essentially now it seems like they're gonna have to fight vice again and they're probably gonna get absolutely bodied because vice is powerful in her dream very much so uh, maybe they're gonna split up some are gonna engage vice in combat and some are gonna go to fight the grim that seems like a plan not the greatest one but a plan nonetheless Maybe they're gonna beeline it for the Grim. Uh, maybe we're gonna use some Tokno Jutsu. That's also still a possibility. Uh, very hard to tell where they're gonna go with it in the end. Very hard to tell. And again, there's the fact that we have uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Five more episodes to go. And this is already feeling like we're nearing the climax of this, uh, of this arc. I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do, but they're gonna do something, for sure. Um, as far as this episode is concerned, I did like it, very much so. Uh, I really did enjoy the additional insight we got. I really did enjoy um, expanding the mechanics of the dream in some certain ways. Uh, some explanations, some answers. And that's it. It very much was basically a setup for the boss fight. So next episode we're gonna see the boss fight. And I'm not gonna try, try to stretch this episode any further. I'm not gonna do the thing that they did here with the train. So uh, I, I'm probably gonna stop talking right now. A bit of a shorter episode this time around, apparently. But what can you do? I'm not gonna spin around in circles, uh, talking about things that don't need to be talked about any more than they already were. Yeah, I'm just quickly seeking through this episode and there isn't particularly much, much more to mention here. Maybe the fact that, uh, I don't know, that Zhang got the, uh, had the scarf and the 
and the gloves is significant somehow that Vice, despite seeing Team Juniper as still is, sees them as still very tightly knit, neat group of friends. I don't know. I don't know. I'm 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 grasping at straws here. So I think it really would be best if I just stopped here. But uh, maybe you guys, maybe you have something more to add than uh, I did. And uh, if so, do let me know in the comments what did you think of this episode, of my reaction, of my theories. No spoilers, please. There is a uh, Discord server. You can join it here or link in the description. And there's a Ruby channel there and you can talk spoilers to your heart's content in that very channel. Um, I like this video, if you liked it, dislike it, if you disliked it, but tell me why so I can improve, subscribe to the channel to be notified of future releases of not only Ruby Ice Kingdom, but also Simple Gear GX, Madoka Magica, uh, Overlord Season 4, Hataraku Mausama Season 2, uh, what else, I'm missing something, I'm missing something, this Coliseum, I'm, uh, I have a playthrough of this Coliseum as well, so um, that's another thing you might be interested in. And am I really missing something? I am missing Yofuka Shinota. Yes, I am also making reactions to Yofuka Shinota Call of the Night. So if you want to check that out, and if you want to be notified, subscribe, click the bell. You know what to do, because everybody tells you to do the very same thing. If you want to support the channel, you can do that in multiple ways. You can do that monetarily on Patreon or thrown links in the description for 10 bucks a month on Patreon. You get early access to non-seasonals like um, like Madoka Magica, like Simple Gear GX and future seasons like Disco Elysium. For a dollar, you get a role on the Discord and you also get a place in the credits. Uh, on Throne, you can pitch in towards my purchase of some new gear. And if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, you can still help the channel by sharing my content, spreading the word about my channel, because the word of mouth really matters a lot for the organic growth of a channel, and it really does help to bring in some engagement and subscribers and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, with all that out of the way, I think uh, we can uh, safely end this episode right here, right now. So uh, that's going to be it for me for today. And as always, you guys do all the good stuff, and uh, I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers! And here's the credits I mentioned. You can be one of those people if only you so want.